here so you can see kind of a difference in two of the options that you could get from the Cane Masters. A lot of people ask me about the Cane Masters specifically. Cane Masters is a cane, walking cane designed for cane self-defense. Whether you're practicing with the dojo cane, this is a training cane, but you can also carry this every day. This is an everyday carry cane if you want it to be. There's nothing wrong with this. This one's oak, you can also get it made in hickory. This one is oak, you can have this made in hickory. And this one is a fancier, nicer looking cane with more features. It has this dull blade here, which allows you to break bones much more easily if you need to for self-defense because of the design, because it concentrates all the force of your strikes into this dull blade here. It's a teardrop shape. You can see when I pull that off, that's why they call that the teardrop shape. But it just kind of looks like a dull knife blade or sword blade. It also has the cord here, which helps with the grip if you're hot, sweaty, or bloody self-defense. And then it has these two fancy looking eyeballs, which you can have put on or taken off your choice. I personally don't mind it. I think it's a nice looking cane. This is the one I carry with me in the car every single day. This is the Traveler. The links are below. If you wanna see what these cost or what the dimensions are. And again, get it in oak if you love oak. But if you, I've, I've switched. I used to do everything in oak. Now I go to hickory because it's a stronger. And if your grip is not as strong, if you're not as strong as you used to be, or strength is an issue for you, have it made in seven eighths inches. That's a new popular option from that link below. Just tell them what you want and they'll make you whatever you want, any kind of wood. But hickory is my first choice, 7 8 inch is my first choice. It makes it light and extremely strong. I want you to warm up using any cane that you have. There's no way to do it wrong. Just put your hand here, palm facing up. Good afternoon, Matthew. And you're gonna crank it forward. This is how you get started with cane self-defense training using a cane master self-defense training cane or any other cane you, you have. Just use what you've got. Right, if you have the Cane Masters cane, that's great. If not, use whatever cane you have. Self-defense cane training is not limited by your equipment. It's limited by your imagination. You're going around and around in this motion. It's just a small cranking motion forward. The purpose is to develop callus on your hand, to get a feel for how the cane moves through space and time, develop spatial awareness, timing and distance, proprioception, to engage the core. You can do the standing or sitting and then you're gonna go across the body and back. This is going to start to force your core muscles to squeeze even more, improving your posture, your overall health, and your fighting fitness. This is self-defense. I want you to become physically stronger, more flexible, more mobile. Wherever you are, that's your starting point. That doesn't mean you're gonna stay there. You can make small improvements, and as long as you keep moving in that direction, there's no telling. I don't know how far you'll go, you don't even know, only God knows. So just get up and move from side to side or sit in a chair and move, but do this motion. Go back out to the side and I want you to do this for at least 30 seconds per spin, 30 seconds here, then you can put it into the other hand. All I did there was bring it over the top and I'm gonna crank it forward again using my left hand this time. The feet are just under your body. There's no special stance. This is not martial arts, this is self-defense. There's a big difference. You're going around and around. Then you're gonna go across and back, across and back. Martial arts and self-defense share a lot of the same techniques, the same moves, a lot of the same principles, but make sure in your mind you keep them separated. If you mean to use the cane for self-defense, you have to have self-defense principles and not martial arts principles. After you go side to side for about 30 seconds, bring it back out, do this spin a few times, and again, your goal is get your heart rate up. It's gonna come up just a little bit. It's gonna build that strength in your hand. You're not practicing striking moves here. You're simply warming up your body, getting blood to flow into the joints so you can stay safe from injury. Now, after your basic warm up, I want you to get into a simple position here where the cane is next to you, whichever hand you prefer, because you're gonna use both if you can. Always be ambidextrous when you can. And the feet are just under your body about as wide as your shoulder. If I face this target, we're gonna call this bag the threat. The first motion I want you to practice with a cane in this traditional way of holding it is just bringing it up into the groin, right between his legs. This is how I want you to start with your self-defense cane training. Just a real simple move. If you don't have a target to strike, practice it in the air. And imagine, use your vision, your mental 
power to imagine what's happening as you strike someone hard and as fast as you can right between the legs. The good news is if you miss the groin and it comes up and smashes his jaw and breaks his teeth against each other for self-defense, that's okay too. This is cane self-defense training using the cane master's self-defense training canes. So I'm just snapping it straight up under the chin over and over for 30 seconds. You're gonna start nice and easy, kind of slow at first, and then faster and faster so your hand gets used to the force that's gonna be put into it from that motion. You wanna get used to it in training so that if you have to use it for self-defense, it's not the first time you've done that. It's not the first time that you miss your target. You wanna go over and over. And again, if you can, if you have something to hit, hit it. If you don't have something to hit, don't hit it. Do that 30 seconds in one hand and put it in the other one. Hello from Reno, Robert. It's good to see you. You're, um, you're now on the other side. It's just the same exact thing. And I know Matthew uses a cane for mobility. So I uh, threw the other cane out of the screen or I'd show you. But just hold on to one cane and practice with the other one. Use two canes, one for mobility, one to get around if you can. And if you can't, if you're in a chair, do it from the chair. All these motions can be done sitting down. This is self-defense. There's no hard and fast rule about what you have to look like, what you have to wear, how fit or unfit you are. There are no martial arts traditions or customs that you're gonna break. Nothing to worry about, just what works. If I lift this really fast and snatch that guy up between his legs as he gets too close and I said back up and I'm trying to defend myself, bam, you become your own first responder, that's okay, there's no rule. You're not gonna be violating any code or covenant when you snap that guy, right? So do, just do what works, that's the point. All right, that's the first move. Snatch it up right there. Like I said, if you miss his groin and you happen to hit him under the chin and bust his head back, for self-defense, that's okay too. The second thing I'm gonna have you do is get into a better position by sliding the hand down and it becomes sort of like a sword or a, um, a long stick, like a collie stick or an escrima or knee stick that you're going to use to thrust into his face. So from this position for self-defense, I'm gonna let it slide up and I'm gonna thrust. To get more power, I'm gonna turn my shoulders and hips. Turn your shoulders and hips. So you bring it up, turn to get more power, extend your arm all the way. So lift it up to here, turn and extend. Extend the arm, turn the shoulders and hips. To get more power, you're going to take a step with the foot on the same side of the body that's holding your walking cane for self-defense. Cane master's cane, and either hand is very deadly but for self-defense. But when you step, you now generate a lot more force and you're going into soft targets. You're going into the nose, teeth, throat, solar plexus, groin, right through the middle of their body with that first thrusting motion, but you're not gonna stop there. You're going to build upon this basic technique with multiple strikes, making a combination. So from here, I'm gonna thrust and then pull to the shoulder. So from here, pick this one up, thrust, pull to your shoulder. Now this hand here can't just dangle like that down there unless you're holding on to your cane, that's fine. If you're not, bring it up. Bring it up with the cane so that you can protect this side of the head. If a weapon comes out, if they happen to have a bladed weapon like a knife, a machete, a hatchet, or um, any other kind of weapon, a skateboard, they're trying to hit you with a, a, a baton or you know, like a police baton, you see those a lot these days, or a baseball bat. You want to be here and protect the head. Let the arm and the whole upper body absorb it. Even if this breaks, that be it's better than this breaking, right? You don't want to break that. You don't want to be knocked out. You want to be able to absorb it. Better yet, you want to hit them as it's coming in. And as they're coming like this, all of a sudden now they're going back because that's going straight in their face. So from here, you're going to bring this up into a better position. Let it slide down which, by the way, is the reason you do all of the spinning at the beginning of these workouts. That's to get this feeling of letting it slide easily through your hands, however you want it, whether it's in this position or in this position, sliding here, jabbing in the face, ripping, 
but you want it to be able to slide with ease so you get that with this spinning motion. So back to this position here. I bring it up, let it slide a little bit. I'm going to extend the arm, turn the shoulders and hips, and step in with the strike, bring it to the shoulder, and then take this angle. Think about going through their, from their temple through their jaw or the neck to the other side of the body or breaking one of the joints as they reach for you or try to stab you or try to hit you or smash you. You're gonna smash that arm for self-defense. So from this position, we're building a striking combination. Build it, put it in here, step as you thrust from your shoulder, strike down, bring it to the other shoulder and strike down. That's three strikes building from a ba really basic position. From here, better position, thrust, strike one, strike two. Then bring it into your chest, and I want you to blast them from here straight to the face. Hello, um, Alex, good to see you. Yeah, I'm glad you're learning the nunchucks. Thank you, everybody, for being on here, for being live. I know I haven't been as active on the, uh, the social or on the, the YouTube streams, but as you can see, I'm getting a lot of work done. I signed a lease today for a new space, and... Now I have a matter of days, I, and I have a big test coming up here on Saturday. I gotta paint the whole place so it doesn't look so bad. Move everything to the new location, turn the keys in here, and you know get occupancy over there all within like a few days. So, and on top of that, I always do this to myself. I'm teaching all these classes at the school, the kid, little kid school. I teach like uh, 280 kids this week already, and then I have. Um, I'm painting someone's house to try to pick up extra money. Why do I do stuff? That's, don't do that, don't follow that. Pick one thing and do it really well. Don't, I, I panic sometimes, right? We all panic and I thought, oh man, Christmas is coming out, I gotta get a couple extra bucks. Someone said, because they know I paint really well. Um, I paint a lot, I've been painting since I was a little kid. I painted before I did martial arts. So I said, yeah, sure, yeah, I'll come over and I'll paint. But the reality is I don't have time, so I gotta paint like, and this 20 minutes here and an hour and a half over there, and then you just clean up and all that. Anyway, I'm not complaining, I'm not complaining. I'm just telling you why we haven't been working together as much, but I appreciate you being here now. So from here, this is the combination. Thrust, shoulder, shoulder, blast. I'll tell you what my goal is. Yeah, multitasking, which is not good. You know what, I can't multitask, you can't really either. We either um, task stack or task switch. You switch from one to the other, or you um, put one on top of the other. That's how we really do it. We call it multitasking, but we can't, no one can multitask, it's not possible. Your brain's either focused here or it's here. You might have stuff running in the background, but that's distracting your focus from over here, which is why this place isn't painted yet. I've been multi, not multitasking, I've been switching tasks. From here, one, two, Three, then I want you to take this crook right here and just simply rake it from right to left or left to right, however it looks to you. Just wherever that crook is, you're coming through the face for self-defense. You're gonna remove their eyes, their nose, their teeth from their head, remove it for self-defense. We're talking life and death. You're going home, they're going to the hospital or worse. They shouldn't have, you're your own first responder. The Quakers had a saying, pray and move your feet. You pray, I hope someone will help me. And then, if they're not there right away, you're your own first responder. You have your cane, you've done your training. You're practicing with cane master self-defense cane all the time. Pray and move your feet. I hope I don't have to hurt this person. He's gonna to try to hurt me. I'm going home tonight to my family. I'm gonna protect my family. I'm gonna protect those who are important to me that I love and I care for. So you back up. And then thrust, one, two, three, four. Practice that in combination for about 30 seconds. Once you build the combination up, then throw it in the other hand. Step in, thrust from the shoulder, shoulder, blast them, and then wherever that crook is, remember that's like a sharp, not a sharp, it's dull because it's wood. That's like a tooth. That's a, that um, bevel right there. This is on all Cane Masters canes. Cane Masters makes canes only for self-defense. They're for mobility. They don't make them only for self-defense. They make them for mobility. They're walking canes, but they're specifically designed to be also available to you instantly for self-protection. So go to that link below if you want to see what that looks like. Oh, there's also a card down there. If you don't have a Cane Master's cane, 
but you want to know what are the laws that protect you to carry, allow you to carry the cane, especially here in the United States, go to the Cane Masters website, that first link below, and then there's a card. It says like a pocket carry card or something, and it tells you what your rights are. And if you don't want to buy the card, write them down. It's not going to cost you any money. No one's going to hate you for it, but make sure you have yourself protected. All right. Now, I want to talk about two-handed strikes because when we talk about close quarters combat, right, they're right up in your face. We want to get them out of your face as soon as possible. So I'm in this position. Let's say he catches me off guard because the first thing that I want you to train is situational awareness. Always, it's a basic principle of self-defense, any kind of self-defense, situational awareness. If you can see it before it hits you, if you can see it before it gets to you, and you can respond by getting out of there, moving, um, getting into a safe spot, hiding, that's always best. Situational awareness is number one. But it doesn't, the world doesn't happen like that all the time. So let's say all of a sudden you've even taken a blow and now you're, thankfully you've got your cane master self-defense cane, but now you're not so stable on your feet anymore. From this position, they're right on top of you. I want you to take your wrist back here because they're in the front and put it in the other hand. Now from here, I don't want you to lift it up. I don't want you to swing it. I don't want you to do anything except just push it right into the groin, especially if their attack is up here and you don't have time to get your hands up here. This is the age old question. Should I block or strike? Should, and and uh, there are two things to that one thing is people say, well, you should block first because it's self-defense. No, if you know that you are under threat, don't block, you move first. Whoever moves first usually has the advantage, often wins the fight for self-defense. So let's say you've already been hit or you're about to be hit or the swing is coming, even if it's a bladed weapon, don't try to block the knife. Don't try to get your cane up. You can't get it up in time. Instead, stick it in the groin and make them move their body, change what their body's doing. They're coming in like this and all of a sudden they're like this, you're creating distance. From there, immediately, you can bring this elbow up and strike again. You can strike multiple times and it's a very strong strike and it's not hard on your shoulders. It's not hard if you're not as strong as you used to be. So from here, just practice from here to here. Just turn that hand up, turn that hand up and then go right just in the center line of the body. If they've already hit you or they're about to, even if they're up on top of you, and this comes up between the legs again, right? It comes up here, smash, 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 smash. All I'm doing here is lifting this front arm. And this is a very simple, easy move for most people. Unless you have some limitation that stops you from that, obviously. But this is different than this. This is using the shoulder to lift. There are a lot of people as you as they age where they get these shoulder injuries or a weaker shoulder, torn rotator cuff. It's like everybody and their brother's got a torn rotator cuff or their sister. But this doesn't require the shoulder at all. This is just the forearm, right? And the bicep and a little bit of the hand. So from here, if they're right on top of you, close quarters combat using a self-defense cane, cane master self-defense cane, just bring it up. Turn it into the other hand, and like I said, if they're on top of you, this is where their legs are, and you happen to hit them in the middle of the legs as it's coming up, you'll get it there. You reach down and grab it, you strike whatever's there, and then start to quickly lift your hand up until you're striking into the center line of the body and sort of a, a bayonet attack, right? Then from here, I want you to bring it down on top of the head. See how I lean my body back and I come forward? You're coming forward with your body weight. Now, practice that with a target. If you don't have a target, don't use a target. So just step back with the foot or step forward with the foot. Imagine the attack is here. You can use your imagination. Try to visualize it. Pop it in that hand. Thrust. And then as you're thrusting, slowly or quick, not slowly, gradually is the word. Gradually lift it up, but quickly do that and thrust all the way up and see how little that's moving. It doesn't have to travel that far because if it's already on their nose, just a little bit of move is gonna break that nose, make the blood flow. Just a little forward motion, just these pulsing motions. And they don't have to be hard because you're hitting such 
sensitive, soft spots of the body. The sternum's not going to do anything. The belly's not going to do that much. But the solar plexus, right where they breathe, where the diaphragm is, that's going to knock the wind out. You hit that, it doesn't take much pressure to collapse somebody's trachea, and then they asphyxiate and die for self-defense because they wouldn't back off, they wouldn't leave you alone, they wouldn't stop trying to hurt you or kill you or take something from you, your life, your dignity, and you thrust in here. Then once you get it to the top, bring it in, just bring it straight up and lean into it. Use your upper body weight and strike down. Simply strike down. That's just a simple routine, something new that you can do. Yeah, Matthew says soft targets. But I've been wanting to, th I've been thinking about working with the uh, students that I have here in person on what's more effective and what works. Because the question keeps coming up. If I have, if I myself am older, if I'm in my 70s, I have a lot of students in the 70s, or um, some of you are teachers and you're teaching other people this, and you're saying that it doesn't seem reasonable that this motion is going to stop someone who's much bigger and coming in. But what we're finding when we stress test it, that means we do it here and you know put a little bit of gear on and we use the, the so I use the softer cane, the um, a rattan cane, and I, I go after them. And as soon as they stick that in my groin, I don't care how much stronger I am than the other person, it moves me back. It stops my forward advance. And then when they stick it here, into this parts of the body, it doesn't take much. And I have to respond and cover my throat because I don't want to feel what this feels like when it hits the throat. Because I know I've been hit enough times in the throat, thank God not hard enough to die, but enough to know that it doesn't take much pressure to knock somebody back, especially the tip of one of these cane master self-defense canes. I mean, right under that, and that's all it is. It's just a big piece of oak. And then if you get this made in hickory, it's even stronger and heavier meaning that when you hit, it's got a lot more force. So just practice that. Snap it here and then practice going into the middle. Now, the next combination I want you to practice at home for with your um, self-defense cane training, using the Cane Master self-defense cane, is with your hand on it in this position as opposed to this position. This is the position that a lot of people will carry their cane in. This is the crook out, this is the crook crook facing out. And here's another feature I want you to see. This is why we're doing cane master specific today. And if you don't have cane masters cane, that's okay. Use what you've got a Carex cane. And that means it comes in and it's a little bit less um, open here, but these are made more open so that you can do that combat cane spinning, right? This is, like I said, this is built, but I, when I first started teaching cane, I, I told people get the Carex cane. It's like $9 excuse me, $10 on Amazon with free shipping and, or you can get them at your local uh, CVS or Walgreens pharmacy. And I stopped telling people to do that because they break so easily. And the reason that those canes break is that when, first of all, they're cheap. <laughs> they only cost $9. Uh, second, it's made, so it's made out of cheap wood, but second, they're also dry on the inside. They kiln dry it so they don't rot. When you get a Cane Master self-defense cane, you have to oil it, right? It, you, and you're gonna oil it up, even if, and, and, and you, but you, you, and they soak it in oil. When they get it, they sew, they have a, a patented process that's top secret. I don't even know what it is. Um, uh, Keith won't tell me, he won't show me. And I'm not gonna ask, I don't wanna know your secrets. But they, he soaks these things in, in an oil polymer mix for several days, meaning it sucks it back in so that, that dry, thirsty wood becomes pliable again, it becomes strong, it becomes heavier. And when you strike with these Cane Masters canes, they hit so much harder, so much faster than a Carex cane for $9. And I broke so many of those Carex canes hitting the banana bags, which I've removed from the wall because I got to take everything down. Taking these down tonight, we're going to work out on it. I got a lesson coming in about 10 minutes. After that, I'm going to make him hold on to it while I rip it off the wall. Next time you see me, no, next time you see me, we'll probably be in here. But hopefully next week, we'll be in the new location. When you break $9 canes four times, you could have bought this once. Because this is about the same as the Carex canes. The, for, the link below. My math might be off, so you might want to double check me. It's either four or five canes, but it's about that. This one I've had now for a couple years, 
and you're not going to break this one, I'm not going to break this one, is as long as I keep it oiled, and I oil it maybe now once every two or three months, and because I use it daily, the oil from my skin gets in there too. That's going to happen with your cane. All right, so with your cane facing out, the crook facing the opponent, the threat, the thug, the punk, the, remember, like I said, you're going to be your own first responder. I don't know if you, uh, Matthew says seven days, yes. I don't know if you have watched the news lately. I'm trying not to, especially now because it's Christmas time. Um, oh, hello, Marjorie. There's a lot of craziness out there. And um, it's not just the violent attacks are going up, but now in some cities, in some areas, the thugs are following people home. They're attacking them as they come out of the hotel or out of the restaurant, just randomly on the streets. So it is a, a, an incredible increase. It's not something, I'm not trying to be alarmist or whatever. I honestly do believe that one way that you should prepare yourself when you can, and I think everybody can, is for self-defense. Be your own first responder. Learn a little bit of how to use emergency medicine, uh, you know, how to do a CPR, how to stop a bleeding wound, um, all kinds of different wounds, how to use a tourniquet, and then also how to do some basic self-defense so that you don't have to be a victim, you don't have to be afraid, and uh, you know, you're, they're gonna hit you, you're gonna get hit anyway, you might as well hit them back, right? In my, in my mind, for self-defense. I've been saying this since I, 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 I think I learned it when I started martial arts when I was nine years old, and I was in the judo class, and the instructor said, you know, get your hands up, at least if you can't grapple with them, and he's throwing punches, you're gonna get hit anyway, you might as well try to stop them by, you know, making them pay for trying to hurt you. And that's the truth. That's the truth of most thugs and bullies. They only pick on people they find to be an easy target. The thugs, the criminals, the pieces of shite that are out there harming other people. And, and I can find no justification for it. They're just opportunists of the worst kind. They only go for uh, victims. They're only looking for people who look weak. And you might feel like, especially if you have to use a cane for mobility, that you have now made yourself a target because you have to leave the house and you're using a cane. But little do they know that you're carrying it like this, the crook facing out, so that when they come close enough and you said, back up, you're too close, you can snatch that up super fast, just like that first motion with it facing the other way. This way is even stronger and faster up between the legs. This is a better grip. This is more ergonomically correct when you carry it. When you, if you use, use a cane to ambulate, to walk with, this is a better way to carry it anyway. If you snatch this up between his legs, throw on this hand, strike right there through the middle, pull this up to your shoulder, come down across the side of his head, just like this, turn that crook around and rip everything off of his face for self-defense. I got all excited, not excited, I got pissed off thinking about all these thugs attacking these innocent people and the vulnerable people, going after children and, and older people and people who just mind their own business. It makes me angry and it makes me, it gives me passion to teach you how to defend yourself using the walking cane. It's all self-defense. I just truly believe in it that much. Snatch it up between his legs, stick it in his groin, smash him across the if you can knock them out, that's great. Smash them across here, turn this over, and rake. Just reach in across the face, rake if you need to, finish them off with kind of a rifle butt strike coming out the other side. Now, <laughs> one more technique from this position. And then I gotta go, I have to open the door. Um, private lessons, pull in it. We got a black belt test coming up. Uh, yeah, Matthew says you have to be a little mean. Think of it this way, Matthew, there's a great Confucian concept or idea story about a mama cat. She's a cheetah, the cheetah, the female cheetah is the most, one of the most loving, doting, uh, maternal cats, of the big cats, right? So loving and sweet and kind to her, her kittens. I guess that'd be kittens, I was going to say pups, but that'd be a dog. So this animal who is normally you know, fast runner and they chase down elk and deer and whatever else and rabbit and just snatch them up and eat them, right? If another animal comes up and messes, yeah, or a mama bear, we can call it a mama bear, messes with that cub, messes with that kitten, they turn on a dime. 
it's like you flip a switch. And this is what I want you to install in your head, Matthew, everybody else. Not meanness, not anger, but indignation. Like, how dare you? How dare you come after me? How dare you try to take my dignity? How dare you? Because fear will make you freeze. Anger will make you enraged, and then you won't be able to think straight. Not that I need you to think, but I need you to respond and not react. But if you flip a switch, if you can train yourself and visualize, when you go through this training, and all of a sudden you, you see in your mind this thug, criminal, punk coming after you, trying to take what you have, your, your life, your dignity, your freedom, then you flip that switch, and it's not, oh, I'm so afraid, and you freeze, or you cower and get sliced up, and it's not, you're so angry, you want to just smash them, and you go too far. It's, I can't, I, no, you're not going to do this to me. You don't, you don't have to like me, but you have no right to touch me. You have no right to talk to me like that. You don't have to like me. You don't have to agree with me. You don't have to like the color of my skin. You don't have to like what I look like. You don't like, have, to, have to like how I dress or how I talk, anything. But you have no right. You don't have to like me. That's, that's free. That's your freedom. That's your human right. But you have no right to touch me. You have no right to harm me. You have no right to take things from me. Back up. And then you have your cane. This is the last move. You're going to start here with your self-defense cane, your cane master self-defense cane, and slide it up. Just practice that move. Now, think of what this is. This is a hook, a crook, but it's also like a hammer or a knuckle, right? You're going to take this big fist and smash him right in the nose with it. And again, the principle is hardwood, oak, or hickory. Have this made in hickory. You'll love it. And smash right into his face, right in. Go straight in. Merry Christmas, Daryl. Thank you. Then from here, turn it. Get that crook and rip. It's a two-move combo. From here, this is one. Strike, rip. Throw in the other hand, slide it up, strike, rip. Just practice getting it into that second hand. From here, you can blast, you can uh, bayonet attack, you can bring it down like an ax. You have a lot of options for self-defense using the Cane Master self-defense cane from this uh, crook out position. But it's simply better position. Your hands are up. Every, everybody watching, all the video cameras, there are video cameras everywhere now. That's how we see what's happening in the world. They're spying on us. <laughs> they really are. Anyway, but your hands are out and you're saying, stop. This is the international sign for stop. That way, when the media tries to smear you and say you were just out there looking for a fight and you were the aggressor because you had a cane, a self-defense cane from Cane Master Self-Defense, you can say, no, no, look at the video. My hands are up and open and I said, stop. And I said, back up. And I said, you don't have to like me, but you're not going to touch me. Get away from me. And then they didn't. <laughs> and before they could hit me, I stuck that right in his nose and then I ripped his eye right out of his head for self-defense. I didn't want to, but I had to. It's my human right to defend myself. It is your right, even if the laws don't support it where you live. Because I get that comment all the time. Well, where we live, they don't even let you carry a handkerchief to blow your nose in self-defense. Yes, I understand. I've seen that too. I agree with you. I'm not saying you're wrong. But what I'm saying is your God-given human right supersedes the law of the land. That doesn't mean you're not going to get in trouble for doing it. But when you go and you fight for yourself and you speak up for yourself and you have an attorney or whatever, and they're watching the video, you started in this position. Your hand is open. Just like you're trying to stop anything, right? An international sign around the world. Everybody knows this means stop. Hey, buddy, you're too close. You also know, because you just flipped that switch in your head, like, how dare you, that you're also ready, if you need to, stick that right in his face. And, and don't strike one and done. You're going to go over and over. One, two, three, four. Just smashing as hard and as fast as you can. Just smashing the face into his body, you know, his nose, his teeth, his eyes. Over and over, if you hit that neck, God forbid, for him, and then you turn it immediately, whip it into that other hand, and then rip, or chop like an ax, right? Or use the backside, like a bayonet and a rifle attack. You can strike side to side, you can blast them. You can come down in the middle, you can come up from the bottom. You can turn this up and rip right between their legs, or you can reach in past their neck, back there and all that meat and muscle, and rip, right, for self-defense. Yeah, God can right to defend yourself. I believe that's true. All right, anyway, thanks for being here, Kachu. Uh, Hank, it's good to see you again. You guys have been awesome. Please give me a thumbs up. Share this one. Hopefully, when you see me again, everything's painted. Hello, Sensei Emmett. 
Um, I just signed the lease on the new space today. Gave him a big, scary check. I was talking to one of my advisors, and I said, oh, I'm sorry I'm whining so much. He said, you're not whining, you're just afraid because the world has changed, and it's not the same. And I said, you know what, you're right. He said, that's good for you. You need. He said, I know you. You need that. And he's right. Put, get my back up against the wall and make me fight. That's when I fight the best. So that's what we'll be doing. You guys are a big part of the fight, too. When you share these things and you like this thing and you go watch the other videos and you go to Pascuanali.com and then all your financial support or you buy a cane or whatever, that always helps me out. And that's part of this bigger financial picture. That's what makes this the community. And so that's why I say thanks for giving me the thumbs up. Thanks for sharing. Thank you for um, all you guys who are members, who are paying members. All that goes in and that's what makes this possible. We haven't been profitable yet for two. I started March of last year when COVID started. I got shut down. The, the end of the first week of business for three months. So I kind of, uh, it was bad timing. I'm not complaining, bad timing. So, but I found a great location. I was driving by it last night just to give you an idea of the difference in location, trying to get away from the sun. Um, they had a street sweeper in the parking lot of this new location that we're moving to and they're out to clean in it. And out here where I am now, and I'll show you, that's US-1, out the back door is the Atlantic Ocean. Well, it's the intercoastal and then an island and then the Atlantic Ocean, but that's where we are. And that's why the sun's coming down. Um, but here, sometimes I come in in the morning and it smells like someone took a dew, a dump, because they did. <laughs> it's, it's a reality. And then no one cleans it up, I gotta go out and clean it up. We got bushes out front and one of them's dead. And I know it's for me, throwing bleach out there on all the, the human crap, literally, that is out there. So I don't have to deal with that. So we're going to a really nice location, great part of the town, and um, uh, it's, it's gonna work out. You guys are a big part of that. So thank you so much. And uh, again, thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already. 